This is going to be the next episode of God's Game of Thrones. And we're going to look at the subject of King Nimrod. Shortly after Noah's flood, it doesn't take long for things to go downhill again with the humans on this world. Because for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, there is none righteous, no, not one. They're all as an unclean thing. Man is a failure. God's not a failure. Man is a failure. Man chooses to sin pretty much every time. When there's an option, which there always is because man has free will, he chooses the devil's way. But one of the kings in God's Game of Thrones is a character that's not talked about too much. And he's been raised up and possessed by Lucifer himself. And that is King Nimrod. He is a type of the Antichrist. And this wicked king is the grandson of Ham. And the great grandson of Noah. Many people don't realize this fact. But think about how close you and your grandfather are or might have been. And then think about the fact that Noah was Nimrod's great-grandfather. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. And I, thought, I know that there was no sermon audio back then. I know that there was no Final Fight Bible radio back then. And I guarantee you that Noah's sermons were available in some form, even without those things. I guarantee you that Nimrod heard Noah preach the words of God before they were even written. But still, Nimrod was a rebel. In Genesis 10, 6 through 10, you find out where Nimrod came from. It says, in the sons of Ham. So remember, Noah's three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So it says, in the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Phut, and Canaan. And the sons of Cush, Seba, and Havilah. And Sabta and Ramah and Sabtaka and the sons of Ramah, Sheba and Dedan and Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Erech and Akkad and Kalni and the land of Shinar. So Nimrod was grandson of Ham, not Shem. So he had no right to be king or ruler. And the seed goes through Shem. Nimrod took it on himself to be a king, even though he was the son of Ham. And since he was such a mighty man, he had many followers, and he became the king of Babylon. And although this Nimrod guy was a powerful man, you don't want to be like him or follow in his footsteps. So I want to show you some ways you're acting like a Nimrod. You ever heard that saying, don't be such a Nimrod? I heard that saying growing up. Don't be such a Nimrod and quit acting like a rebel. Are you acting like a rebel? Nimrod was a rebel. The name Nimrod itself means the rebel. And this makes him a picture of the Antichrist who is connected with the number of rebellion. See Revelation 13. Nimrod is the 13th from Adam. And his name means rebellion. 13, the number of rebellion. He's a rebel. 13 year olds are known for being rebellious. Friday the 13th is supposed to be an unlucky day. The first time the word sinners is used, it is in Genesis 13, 13, and it says the Sodomites were wicked sinners before the Lord exceedingly. The first time you see the word 13 is in Genesis 14, and it says in the 13th year they rebelled. So there is something to all the numerology stuff in the Bible. Nimrod is connected with the number 13, and he is a rebel. So you don't want to be a Nimrod. Anytime you go against what the Bible says, you're a rebel. When you go against what your parents say, then you're a rebel. 
If you are a woman who runs the house and won't let your husband lead, you're a rebel. If you're a, a Christian and you don't consider Christ the head of the church, you're a rebel. 1 Samuel 15, 23, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. So Nimrod is a rebel, just as the Antichrist will be. They also both have a kingdom in Babylon. And you can read about the Antichrist connection to Babylon in Revelation 17 through 18. Both men are completely rebellious. And it says about the Antichrist in Daniel 11, 37, Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. So the Antichrist will magnify himself above all. And that's what Nimrod did. And you might be a Nimrod if you think you're something when you're nothing. Galatians 6, 3, For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Nimrod was considered by people on earth as a mighty hunter before the Lord. He magnified himself above all. Genesis 10 and verse 9, He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. It's possible that that means that people said that he was a mighty hunter before the Lord, as in, he was ahead of God. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. That's what was being said. Nimrod is called the Assyrian in Isaiah 23, 13. And this connects him with the devil, who is also called the Assyrian and the rod. Isaiah 10, 5 says, O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger, and the staff in their hand is mine indignation. So you see these words like that, this connected with the Antichrist the, and the devil. The devil is God's rod. He uses the devil as a puppet to chasten the saints or even to uh, just put judgment on a group of people or a person. He uses the devil as a rod. He uses a wicked ruler like Nimrod as a rod. And you're acting like a Nimrod when you're a rebel because that's what the devil is that's what the Antichrist is and you're acting like a Nimrod when you get ecumenical are you trying to get everyone and everything together do you believe the Christians should fellowship with the Muslims and Hindus and the LGBT movement and all these things do you think it's a good idea to get everyone together now remember the Tower of Babel the problem with the Tower of Babel is that what they did was something that they did in direct rebellion against God. Even though the Lord wanted Noah's three boys to spread out and populate the earth, that's not what they were doing there. And just like the Antichrist will have the people under one king, one religion, and a one world government, that is what Nimrod wanted. Nimrod wanted everyone to get together. And they did, and they built this Tower of Babel. It says in Genesis 11, 1, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Imagine if everyone spoke the same language, and you had the greatest minds in the world able to sit down and share their genius ideas that are mostly stupid and against God. Genesis eleven six, And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. When people get together, it's not a good thing. The Lord wants believers to dwell together in unity. But he's not for all religions coming together. This only brings confusion. You have to compromise in some way. If a man is allowed to do all he imagines to do, then it would be disastrous. And we saw what happened before in Genesis 6-5. It says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So the Lord does not want Bible believers accepting Catholic, Pentecostal, Mormon, Seventh-day Adventist, Church of Christ. He doesn't want you accepting all of these doctrines just to get along with these people. 
he has Bible believers to dwell together in unity and not getting along with extreme false teachings that come out of the cults. There is room for disagreement on small things. There is not room for disagreement on how a man gets to heaven. You might be acting like a nimrod when you are so hungry for fame that you will try to appeal to all of the other beliefs. There are former Bible-believing preachers doing that right now, trying to get everyone together. They think it would be good if the Pentecostals and the Church of God and the Church of Christ and all of these different, you know, people that aren't Bible believers get together under one roof and just you, you preach to them and sing to them. But the thing is, if you do that, you could never uh, g really give the Bible because they're just going to walk out. Because the Bible goes completely contrary to what they're teaching. The Bible does not teach speaking in tongues. The Bible does not teach baptismal regeneration as these people believe it. The Bible does not teach that, you know, what the Mormon cult teaches and the Seventh-day Adventist teaches. The Bible doesn't teach that you must keep the Sabbath today. You see, if you preach against these false doctrines, then all of those people would just leave. You can't get everyone together and still teach the Bible. You would have to just give a very uh, positive message a very shallow message to where you're not going to offend anyone. So don't be such a nimrod and quit trying to have the preeminent place. You could be a nimrod if you're trying to exalt your own name. Look at what they were doing at the Tower of Babel in Genesis 11.4. It says, And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. You shouldn't exalt your own name. Give glory to the Lord's name. Those people involved in the tower were trying to make something of themselves, but outside of the God of the Bible. This is what you should do. Exalt Jesus, and he will exalt you. Philippians 2, 9 through 11, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Nimrod wanted to be a big dog. He wanted to make a name for himself. And did he ever. I looked up the word Nimrod in the dictionary, and it is now used for someone who is inept. Someone who lacks skill and is clumsy. You see, they called Nimrod a mighty hunter before the Lord. Now look what Nimrod is in the dictionary. You see how God has a sense of humor? I remember growing up, I would hear people call us, you know, somebody that was acting crazy. They'd say, you're a Nimrod or something like that. It was used as a, you know, kind of like a, a name you call someone who's being stupid. Nobody names their kid Nimrod. I don't know any Nimrods. But you hear a Peter and John and Thomas and Philip. You don't see a Nimrod. Uh, he, he doesn't have a good name. They were trying to make a name for themselves, but he made a bad name. A name that nobody wants. Psalms ten seven says, The memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. You want to have a good name but you don't want to make yourself a name. Uh, exalt the Lord's name, and he'll make you a name. Just like the great preachers of the past that's dead and gone. John Wesley. That's a good name. Uh, Harold Seitler. That's a good name. Sammy Allen. Those are good names. They made themselves a good name because they exalted the Lord's name. Proverbs 22, 1, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Exalt the Lord's name, and he will see to it that you have a good name. You may even have people slandering you and th throwing dirt on your name. 
But as long as it is false, then you still have a good name. Matthew 5.11 Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. They're going to talk about you. They're going to slander you. Just make sure it's false and you still have a good name. So quit being such a nimrod. And stop thinking that you're invincible. The people building that Tower of Bible, I guarantee you, they thought that they were invincible because they were all together. They all joined forces. Uh, Genesis eleven six through 7 And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down. And there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So Babel is confusion, it is disorder. They thought they had it all together, they thought they were invincible. There are men today trying to make bodies that will live forever. But they're trying to do this without God. Instead of getting a glorified body at the rapture because they're saved, they want to build these bodies these robotic bodies and live forever they love this world and they love this life so much without god so much that they're trying to never face the eternal consequences of hell which they claim not to believe in and it says in genesis eleven eight, so the lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth and they left off to build the city so it was nothing for god to scatter the people and all of these uh, mighty men led by Nimrod, the mighty hunter. They were nothing but maggot food compared to God. Less than that. They were dust, the dust of the earth. Genesis 11, 9, Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. The legend is that Shem killed Nimrod. And that's not in the Bible, so we don't know that for certain. But one thing is for sure, Nimrod is in hell wishing he wouldn't have rebelled against God. You don't want to go the devil's way. You want to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross for your sins? He was buried and resurrected. He became sin for you. He shed his blood for you. And he's offering the free gift of salvation to you. If you'll come to him now and put your faith in Put your trust in him as the person who died on the cross for your sins and the only person who can pay for your sins and rely on him and him alone. You can be saved and have eternal life. You don't have to live like a rebel the rest of your life. 